Hello everybody. Welcome to AJ Vlogs and this is vlog one. Edinburgh. And we've arrived at I don't know where we're at. But um as you look behind Okay, so a thing to note there is we're between uh the two tram stops, uh, which is uh, York Place to the left and Picardy to the right. Just to have a better understanding of that, here is which is on Google Maps. So we're standing here somewhere, and the tram stop York Place is here, and Picardy Place is there. So the plan for this vlog is uh, to go and uh, around the perimeter of the St James Quarter, just to show off some of its beautiful architecture. Go inside, eat uh, a German Don Kebab, one of their items, one of their classical uh, menu items. Uh, you know, on the way there, I had some nice delicious boba, or whatever kind of tea that is uh, thing. Uh, I'll show you how to get to uh, St. James Centre. The quickest way is through St. Andrew's Square, and I'll show you the surrounding areas, uh, as well as uh, uh, facts about some of the things you'll see there. From there onwards, I'll, sh I'll take a wee tour of the Princess Street area. I'll show you some of the famous touristy monuments and so on, and which places to go and which places I'd recommend. And then we'll end it at the Rose Fountain, which is a really beautiful fountain. And w some facts about Rose Fountain lead me to extend the tour all the way to up here, uh, where there is a church, uh, St. John's uh, Scottish Church. So, for further ado, I'll start the tour and I'll probably come out in and out of uh, Google Maps to sh uh, keep track of where we're going. Okay. And if you want to look to the right, there's a massive castle. There's the famous uh, Conan Doyle pub. A massive church. I zoom out a little here. Well, you can't zoom out, but massive church. So this right here is the manuscript of Monte Cassino. So he did three uh, three of such works. Uh, some facts about it is that the guy was in it. Uh, he was born in the Leith area of Edinburgh. So um, you know, uh, by my definition, he was a Scottish citizen, but he was of immigrant parents. At the time, the UK government uh, um, had some you know. Um, it was uh, bad times uh, politically, so they classified all German and Italian immigrants as uh, enemy aliens, even the ones born in the country. Uh, so they, uh, you know, exiled, they put him, uh, so the creator of this, if I go out into Google Maps, taking some notes about it. Uh, so the creator for this is a, a guy called uh, Eduardo Pelosi. Uh, so born you know in Edinburgh in 1924 uh, during World War two he was sent to you know fascist youth camps um, and after uh, Italian and immigrants uh, German immigrants were uh, considered enemy aliens he and his father were forcibly imprisoned for three months then his father and his grandfather were shipped off to Canada where they died because they got torpedoed by German forces like the hell is going on here he was living his good life here I, I don't really know the exacts of why people being treated like this but yeah and uh, people being called aliens I thought that was a new thing you know but it seems like it was happening since World War two and then uh, he did his education in the London studying arts uh, he went into uh, serve in the British auxiliary unit uh, when his fa uh, family you know that of his family people thought it didn't affect him much but his work here clearly shows it did and the work is meant to represent the kind of you know the evils of World War Two, uh, and uh, you know um, it, when you look at the shapes, which I'm going to show you some pictures now. Uh, it's a lot of like human body shapes with geographic, uh, gem yeah, uh, ge geometric shapes that are cutting into it and you know damaging the the human body parts. Uh, there were three pieces, so that's kind of cool. And Monte Cassino is an actual abbey uh, which was bombed by the Allied forces in 1944, uh, and it had tons of you know irreplaceable priceless facts books prints various manuscripts and so this is a work that's based on that basically it's inspired from that and I will just show you so my vlog doesn't show a good uh, a, you know angle of it but these are kind of the three pieces uh, and the the sculpture pieces have been moved about so they are you know these are some of the older areas it was at and this is where we're at now 
So this is where it's kind of current. I, I don't want to say final resting place, but it's current resting places. And so that's the foot. That's a different angle. So I'm standing somewhere there, looking towards it. Uh, so on. So I'm gonna have hand. There's the third piece over there. And so yeah, uh, it's quite a cool piece of work. If anyone's ever interested. So we'll move on. The baby bib will come for use later on. The Conan Doyle pub is uh, named after the famous author, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, the creator of Sherlock Holmes. So that's something cool there. Moving on with our tour. So you see in the back, that's the St. John, uh, uh, St. The John Lewis Shopping Centre, sorry. This is one of the side entrances to it, and to our right, you see here, that's the food entrance for it. So this is one of their uh, food um, kind of street vendors thing. So we've got different types of foods up here. You've got like Japanese, Lebanese, Middle East, you've got all the foods, which will be something to try out. So some things to note is that right, there's a moral to some kind of boxer. I don't remember the fact. I've read it a couple of times. I believe I'll the first food there. Back of it and then I'll go I don't around. remember. I think it might be a coffee shop or something. Uh, the second one is definitely a coffee shop. The third uh, one is uh, um, in uh, Lebanese, Middle East, and Indian, and so on. They look quite cool. So these are all the food stalls: coffee, tea. Some kind of Middle Eastern food, some kind of Indian food, I believe, and some kind of Japanese food at the very end there. This is kind of the second main entrance, no, third main entrance. So it's quite massive in terms of the kind of areas, just gigantic. Don't really have scale. It's got tons of stuff to the right and left of it as well. So it's not like the. Yeah, it's just around by everything. I don't know what that shop is, I believe it might be a coffee shop, the botanist I think it was what it was called. So if we go around it, rather than going through the front, we'll go around kind of the back areas around the building. You can see kind of the shops and I think I believe this is the hotel, since James Wars. So hotel, quite a nice area. I'm just gonna skip through a bit of this because this is just alleyways, me looking up and down at stuff. It's not too interesting. If you if you're ever in the area, you can go around. Uh, this is uh, just me and Google Maps. I'm just going around this part here. Cool, thank you. This is the kind of I believe this must be the power every area of it, um, buildings here, but this is kind of houses and stuff here. Very old looking. I don't know if the camera shows it really well, but the houses are all super old uh, with the modern building on this. This building is meant to look like an orange peel, but I'll show the second entrance in the back and then I'll go to the back of the building and I'll show you where the orange peel is. I'm just going to skip a bit forward because uh, this is. Uh, I don't think this is too entertaining, but this is just me comparing the ancient har architecture of the surrounding areas with the modern building. I'll show you anyways, this is where all the animal team is. Well, number actually, we're all the animal team is. So this right here is a bus stop. Now I'm gonna go back to normal speed. I think they look very nice. I mean, they're not modern smooth buildings, but they're bricks. An old kind of thing. I'll see if there's entrance to the back is accessible. As you can see, the it doesn't seem to be accessible with the construction or something. So I'm talking about one of the, I think there are four entrances, so to my left here is the entrance I'll be going in through later on. So we're here at this part in the map and in the tour. Um, we've gotten all the way from here all the way to here. This is the entrance to my left here. To my right is some really nice shops and I'm seeing that there's an entrance somewhere up here as well. Uh, but you can see that there's some construction going on there. Later on we'll, we'll come back down this way, so we'll go out and then come back in. So, to the right here is the, I'll just go through it, it's where all the famous kind of branded shops are, I don't know what LKB net is, but supposedly like this is where all the expensive kind of shop areas are, all the luxurious brands basically, Canadian Goose, which is quite expensive, some of the whiskey shops, watches, I'm not sure about these shops, but supposedly they're good. 
Right. And at the end of this kind of street as well, you'll find the transport, so on Edinburgh Trams, which is a really good service, it takes you everywhere in Edinburgh more or less. So I'm just gonna go skip a little bit further here because uh, this is just all the famous, you know, luxurious brand, branded shops. I'm talking about the kind of uh, fair, so I'll just pause the video here. Uh, you see there, that's the St. Andrew's stop, so we're currently here. And some things that you need to know about this is that, um, right here I believe is where the stop is. Uh, not sure, but it's, it's just when you leave it, it's somewhere here. Um, the fare for it for all day is uh, currently, um, w you know, the UK is going through some dire times right now. It used to be £4 over the last year or so, it's jumped up to £5 for all day ticket. The f uh, cool thing about the all day ticket is that it covers both uh, the Luthien buses and the Luthien trams. So the tram historically used to only go from, from the city centre to the Edinburgh airport. Uh, and now it goes, uh, you know, to my uh, right, all the way towards Ocean Terminal. Uh, so it's quite far. It covers quite extensively. It goes all the way, I think, up to there somewhere. Yeah, yeah, up all the way to there. So historically, you should only come here. Now it goes all the way up there. And if you know, so if you're ever visiting, I'd really recommend you buy that uh, full-on experience. Uh, because uh, it's cheap for five pound all day, and if you if you're trying to get to places where the tram doesn't go, Lothian buses covers a vast majority of the Edinburgh region. So for five pound for one day, you can travel everywhere basically, and that's what I'm trying to get at here. And now I'm just going to walk down here and explain some things. So kind of park area. That right there is uh, St Andrews Square. So that's kind of the back area. And some things about St Andrew's Square is I don't want to get too too much detail and get bogged down, but the Mevel Monument uh, is is quite interesting and chaotic history about it. The sailors and the navy people love the guy, but the guy had done a lot of questionably bad stuff. So I think uh, he was uh, one of the guys that delayed the freeing of slaves basically because of him. Six hundred fifty thousand extra slaves. Uh, I don't want to use the word extra, but uh, if the agreement or pack or legislation had went through that would ban uh, slavery, uh, historians theorize that 650,000 fewer people would have been enslaved because of his uh, direct actions against, uh, you know, banning of slavery. Uh, nearly more than half a million people were, you know, sent to the colonies as slaves and so on. But uh, he's a very chaotic guy. Uh, you know, he was an aristocrat with, uh, you know, a strong Scottish accent, so uh, there was a lot of, I don't want to use the word bullying, but uh, d d look up the guy, I I he's a strange, you know, chaotic character. From the front and the side what it looks like, which will be quite cool. Just I'm just going to, you know, going I'm just going through this area down here, and I'm just showing you what everything here is. In the local area. Yeah, this right here is the Royal Bank of Scotland headquarters. Just going down there. Quite nice. It's a really nice place. I, don't, I, guess I just want to really show that off. Now we're moving here. Well, the entire Parks tour should be really nice. Uh, see, I think that was a tour bus right there. I'd recommend maybe not going on the tour buses. They're quite costly, and wherever the buses go, you know, they're like two-story. Uh, most buses in Edinburgh are two-story, so you can just go on a normal bus and have that kind of high experience. But you wouldn't, you know, you'd have to search your own history. No one would tell you what the history and stuff of the surrounding areas are. Just be curious. And 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 be adventurous and just Google stuff like I'm doing right now. <laughs> so up here, there's a guy to my left. He's wearing a traditional like a Scottish wedding wear. Uh, we we're lucky enough to see him um, later on in the video, but I think his mother aunt was taking pictures of him and he was posing. He was kind of giggling. It was it was quite a a nice sight to look at. It was quite heartwarming. Very cool a guy in a <laughs> in a traditional. Oh, you guys didn't see the camera, but there was a guy to my left, which was in a traditional kind of Scottish clothing. Let's move on. Kind of off surface one. Kind of not in its prime. I'm going to board it up a wee bit to the left. And all this stuff. 
So one thing that uh, you know I should mention is you will see poverty in around the area. It's something that you know should really be tackled better, but you know politics and money and stuff so it's it's it's, it's something that you know even in this uh, brief uh, you know vlog that I did uh, it's in a couple of homeless people in that small vicinity and you know in, in a first world country I don't believe that should be a case oh, geez, not all roses and you know it's nice of you and then this is the first kind of hotels in massive hotel the first thing um, when you come out so this hotel is called the Belmore Hotel and I I've, I've got a ton of facts about it but I'll let the video play before I pause. Which is just behind the bus. But it's massive, like look at it, it's, it's a goddamn castle. They claim that the clock is one minute or so uh, early, so that people need to catch the trains are catching on time. So I'm really next to the background. Massive stuff, very busy areas. I think there's the, so that's the train station to the right over there. So that uh, this stuff important. That's why I'm pausing here. That right there is the Haymarket, uh, not the Haymarket, the Waverley train station. Uh, you go down in an escalator down there to go to the platforms. Uh, something of note is if you are a wheelchair user or you need accessibility because you've got luggage or whatever. If you go down through this path right here, rather than going down, there's an elevator up there. A two elevators you can take them down to whatever floor you need. Uh, at uh, you know at every floor in most train stations near the stairs. If you go around the back of any stairs, uh, a, there's always an elevator uh, because accessibility is important and it should be you know available to everybody. To the left here again. Yeah. Kind of my left here is the Apple Store. Uh, my right here is the front of the hotel. Again, kind of the area. So, uh, so this is nice kind of area here. Okay, I didn't pause too much on the Belmore Hotel, but that, that hotel is uh, massive, and if you ever get the opportunity, go uh, look at it. So I'm just uh, got a wee bit of a fact about it. It's, it's so, you know, its history is so. Um, it's like more than 100 years old. Let me check. So uh, Belmore means majestic dwelling, uh, and it's going to have its 120th um, anniversary on October the 15th. I, 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 the design for it started uh, even more than its anniversary, so it was in 1895 by two gentlemen here, and uh, it was owned uh, by the railway companies, basically the Northern British Railway, because it's built on a rail um, station, uh, on a train station. Uh, that uh, uh, iconic clock. Um, Ever since it was opening, it was set three minutes fast so that people wouldn't miss the trains downstairs. Um, the only time the clock is on time is during New Year's or during the uh, the New Year's in, in Scotland there's a ceremony of hog money so uh, you should google it if, if you're ever here during December it's a, a festival uh, the you know the railway uh, started uh, so the hotel started uh, blending its own bottles and whiskies and going down just the years some you know things that happened uh, so the railways were nationalized later on they were privatized Everyone th uh, and then they were renationalized. So uh, now, or well, currently they're being renationalized, or they have been renationalized. The hotel was closed in 1989 for two years when it was bought over by a local company uh, called Bermel International Hotels, and they bought it with the intention of making it a new luxurious international hotel. Uh, and in 1991, so that's uh, you know three years uh, since it was uh, close to refurbishment. Uh, 23 million pounds were spent and it was really vamped up and it's like a massive castle. so it's quite cool. I always recommend anybody who just the front stand there and appreciate and the beauty. To my left is the guy. So that guy right there. The so the guy right there, traditional Scottish kind of wedding. He was feeling a bit embarrassed when his, uh, you know, whoever this colleague this there is in the blue jumpsuit was sure. taking pictures of her. This, this right here is the natural, I think, um, space for uh, Scottish history so this is what the name for it is it's the National Records of Scotland uh, I'm not sure how you get get into it or not and this guy right here is just uh, some uh, guy in a war and it's, so I don't remember I think I read history but I wasn't uh, too much Again. interested in it but the feet of the horse supposedly you know if they're up in the air I believe like two feet might mean uh, the gentleman died in war 
one foot uh, one foot up and one foot down means that they might have died from complications. Uh, you know, they survived the war but wounded or something, and they died from complications of that. And both feet on the ground might mean that the gentleman died from old age. I don't remember. Just Google this these bus. things. This is the North Bridge. So if you want to go to the famous kind of uh, touristy sites, you've got to cross North Bridge over to. So this right here is North Bridge here. So if I zoom in, it goes over the train station, massive bridge, and if you get over to the other side, this here is the famous um, tourist areas. Uh, up here, you've got uh, I think the Royal Mile somewhere here. Uh, I forget, but uh, it should be here. Yeah. So the Royal Mile is, is this uh, right here, and it's got all the landmarks and everything, and it's got this massive St Gill's uh, Cathedral. Which I'd really, you know, is is free to entry. It's massive. They do try and ask you for a donation, but you know, it's up to you. Moving on. So you go through here and you see kind of. Uh, Edinburgh Castle is also past North Bridge to the right, but and later on the tour I'll show that as well. Anyways. On the other side. <laughs> so that right there is the Scottish Monument uh, National. Uh, let me see what it's actually called. It's called. I believe what we're looking at is the National um, Monument of Scotland, or it could be the Douglas Stewart Monument, not sure. But we're looking at this general area from our point here. Nice. So now we're approaching um, the front of the St. James's. But I mean, just for one second, like, look at this architecture. Pillars, and it looks straight from, like, you know, the Greeks, Romans, whatever, like it looks way from long ago. It doesn't look like a modern That's building right, at all. So. so this right here is the kind of the main entrance I'd say for the uh, Saint um not Saint what is this called? The James um yeah, I think it's Saint James Quarter. Okay. And that's the famous orange peel. So this right here is a quite controversial um building, but we'll get onto that later on. So normally, for me personally, I just enter through here or I enter through the back from the St Andrews train station, uh, and there's you know tons of stuff inside. And we'll move on with this. Up here, this is the famous orange peel. Architecture of the shop, of the shopping centre. This was quite controversial because, as you can see, there's a lot of historical buildings to the left and right in the area, and the big worry was that this would encroach on the beauty of the natural historical aspect of it. I mean, look at those slabs. Everything here is so old looking compared to the modern orange peel right there. And this is another entrance. I mean, I thought there were only three, but there's now I'm cutting. You know, the one to the Branded shops. And this is the famous orange peel. If you can see it. So. See, I, I don't know what the actual name for this building is, but I, I believe, uh, I, I think I call it the uh, orange peel. But the, one of the kind of things that I'm looking at this now and reviewing the footage is, it's not orange. <laughs> the color of it is copper brown or something like that, and it's not, it's not as smooth or nice looking as I'd imagined it. I mean, tell me, you know, whoever's watching this, is this is, does this look like a cool modern architecture? Uh, to me, it just looks like a normal building, nothing too unique, nothing too crazy or out of this world. Food kind of area. You go in and there's, I don't know, like 20 different restaurants. It's quite a nice area if you guys ever get to the St. James Quarter. Because of Bunny and Clyde. So, something about Bunny and Wild is it, it's, 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 um, it's, it's like a group of food people all in uh, in small area you've got your kind of Asian foods your kind of British foods uh, I even have some American uh, kind of ch uh, restaurants up there it's got ice cream shops it's got a mixture of everything okay. this was the construction thing we were looking at, at the beginning of the uh, kind of video so this is the entrance from the St Andrews uh, stop so what where we are at now so we went through here we've seen the nice hotels north bridge here we're going up here so this is the main entrance to it we went behind the main entrance to look at some orange peel somewhere here now we're going back down to the main entrance so we're here now and the rest of the video is just going to be scrolling through and showing you all the different shops and stuff 
uh, and well, what really kind of confuses me is this uh, shop here it's a applica uh, appliance shop with the washing machine and stuff so I, I don't know why it's there I, I just find it confusing stuff. so there's a couple of floors here we're on level one you see there's tons of shops I don't know what a company that sells a household because like washing machines bring up clothing shops I don't know why was a nice chocolate or something shop it's really cool there's more clothing shops there's a I'm gonna go off and I'll just have a nice nice open with the entire area but it's pretty good shopping center if you need anything so I think this is where the shop part is Okay, one thing to note is that on every floor or every escalator you've got this kind of help point. Um, I foolishly didn't stop on them because I've been here quite a couple of times. But if you're a first time user and you want to know what all the shops are, you see how all these squiggly lines. Those are all the different shops, restrooms, parking, uh, how to access par you know, your car park and so on. You, uh, these are on every floor I believe and there's, uh, I think there tends to be two uh, uh, two like uh, escalators to uh, uh, every floor one from like the left side one from the right side so uh, i would say like really Single take uh, use of this uh, stuff i'm not sure if i can actually see anything because i wasn't focused on it but yeah so level one level two it breaks down all the levels and tells you everything you need That's to know stuff. so this is where we are in terms of the back entrance with all the shops that's where we came from down in there and in front of us up there is where all the famous render shops are down there is where we came from and this is the top floor so all the boss and everything it's a quite a nice area you can see down there we're quite high up one floor above i think is where more food stuff is there's a lunch oh there's a lingerie shop to the right and so on lots, lots of beauty and fragrances and normal kind of hygienic stuff clothes shop oh god the stabilization is good right there is kind of a local vendor that's right so uh, what I remember is the bottom thing here, we'll see it later on in the video, but not a local vendor. Fragrances from... I don't want to say local, I think I just... I'm going to take a bit of sentimental space over here. I don't know what that is, but it's cool. I think here's all the experiences, you know. So this is the thing on floor 2, there's one more floor above. Level 3, there's another floor above. I'll just, you know, help the fragrance and shit. Okay, so I'm going to go one more floor to show uh, more of the ideas of the biology, which is really shit. We'll be going down, you see where there's the person... Uh, we're down there, we'll be going there for food. I don't even think you can see it, but there it says five guys down there. So there's yeah, five guys down there. Um, we'll be going anyways, we'll be to the right somewhere here for the Jim Brown kebab. Yeah, Shut down anyways down. later on. So let's right. just go up these floors, up these stairs. Oh, so, uh, so the reason why I had the baby bib and stuff is this Vietnamese place. Uh, full. Give you like a napkin, like a treat you like a you know. Uh, so let me uh, go and show you what I mean. So they give you this kind of pink napkin thing. It's, it's I think it's made of like modern plastics and whatnot, and you've got to force your head through it. And this is because I was eating some kind of soupy based, um, you know, food, and and it was chili coloured. So so the guy in the waitress she came in and she's like here and I'm like trying to f figure out how she, she do it so she took it and put it on me <laughs> I have never felt more insecure hands it was hilarious okay uh, moving on they got like tons of restaurants in there I'm not sure if it's Bonnie and Wild but um, I think they're the ones that have all the time for restaurants Lean 7 has like bowling and stuff that's where if you ever want to go for like any fun things, snookers, all your traditional kind of games and it's a pub in there also you get tons of drinks if you want to get hammered above to the next level really nice views so that right there is the entrance I put on the back of the church the entrance is right to the one I just showed the entrance behind me is the one I showed with the all the... I hope the video, even though it's like 2 speed or 3 speed, I, I hope it's, it's um, you know, audible like so what I'm saying Food. That that's a cool ass Medusa sign. That, that's all I want to say. That's cool. No, I mean, a cool ass Medusa sign though. That's kind of main because I normally don't see So that's quite nice. And also where the train station and stuff is, we went behind it to the right. So we went to the right and when I was the orange peel, we went to the straight ahead. This is it. So I'm just saying that train station is there, but w you know we'll be going out this way anyways. We'll be leaving that way, and when I go towards the Princess Street to the right, and show off some of the other stuff. So let's go back. We're gonna go to the next floor now. Speed. Oh, it's so shaky. It's not nice to look at. Nice floors. Nice of them. 
not getting I'm easily pieced full of enemies for places guys. So this is the other entrance we came through. This is where the going on. We're quite high up. We're on, I think, the third floor. My heart rate just went up a wee bit. One of the weirdest things about this place is like they've built this nice glass and everything, but there's no roof. The roof joins up there. Get the better. I'm gonna try and hold my phone nice and still, as I'm afraid of heights. So that's the street vendors right there. So the first one to the right. Uh, blue, not blue color, but it's a grey color with thing banners. Really actually, but the first one. Well, that's like beautiful views in the background as well of all the I think goes all the way to the sea basically of the Edinburgh region and time to go to the final place So what's up here though? Looks nice and it's so warm up here though, so nice. It seems to be no entrance. It seems to be locked up for some reason. Maybe it's a new thing they're working on, I'm not sure. But if we're not meant to be here, we're not meant to be here. Little walk up, like look at the scenery and everything. So nice and beautiful and bright. This is the top level. And we'll be heading next to the very bottom level. We were just below here looking down. Again. Oh my god, the scenery is amazing. So this is where we were looking down before. Uh, now I can't even see down there. Oh god. We'll do sort of level 5. I just like so I just want to call. Nothing James is. Oh my god. You don't drop your phone now. Same views but better. Quite cool. Anyways. Oh, this is the famous orange pill with the top of it now. Right, two back around as much. It's too sunny to see, so I'm just gonna skip this. Uh, on the way back, you'll see a better version of the top of the orange pill. I've never heard of every man. You know, someone in a food place or something. What looks everything going on? Oh, there's hotels, apart hotels. This one. Ah, so these are just private hotels for people. Let's go. Come on, look at these. These are hotels on the very top. For people to understand. So nice up here. These are the views. Oh no. You know what I've never been? There is never a need to be here. These are the hotels for the people. Views. Up there. Quite cool. And I don't know what the hell's going on in there. Business meetings or whatnot. So what I'm talking about is right here. Um, the camera doesn't pick it up, but there are people. And that's a person right there where my mouse is. And they look like they're having a business meeting. And I'm just here vlogging. I'm like, what the hell's going on down there? Just a nice, beautiful area at the very. So like, I think th what we're looking at is again towards this, like the National Monument of Scotland or something like that. I I don't really know. Um, I should have probably done even better of my homework, but where I believe where we are is, so we went to the very top floor, we're up here, and I believe we're looking towards this direction, so we're either looking at like the, this Doug something monument, or, or the Nelson monument, or s some kind of long pillars uh, up in the sky. Uh, but either way, the views are phenomenal, and I think you got to agree with that. Look at this. If you wake up in the morning and see this. Let's move on. So these are the hotels if anyone's interested. Park hotels, really nice, amazing views. And you live right out next to the orange. That's the top of the orange peel. And there's foods, entertainment, everything down here. They've got bowling alleys, you name it. Okay. Now we head all the way down for the food. Okay. 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 This is where we are at, and we're trying to get all the way down where the bubble is. So you, you see the people all the way down, that's where we're trying to get to, where it says super drunk. It's just down there. Very cool. Okay. I'm going to turn the camera off and turn it on when we get the second escalator. We start here, this is the normal entrance to the center. Down there you've got Samsung and other shops. That There's also a Lego store 
somewhere to my right for all of you Lego fanatics out there. This is where we go down. It's quite cool though. This isn't in the bottom floor. I'm there to go like a Japanese food place. And a food place. Cool. Yeah. Really know. We don't really know about the shops in the area. I think just been to find. Sure, I'm kind of the main ones. So we go down this way now. You know, like Bubble on the Gene, down there, you've got Sky, some other people, there's a the example, we're looking up there, we're going to push that up the camera, put a shot on Mango to the left, and then scroll down to the right, something else there, yeah, it's a shoot, shoot scroll, and that's how the different shot we get out of us, playing with Mango's, but not with these shots, I'm going to have those, for things. So this was the kind of uh, place I was saying that it's a uh, local vendor, it's not a local vendor, it's just some guy that takes up this middle of the area. Which is quite cool. And they sell, I think, kind of overpriced perfumes, like 60 quid to 90 uh, quid. So 90 pounds, 60 pounds for something that smells okay. I, I don't really understand fragrances, to be honest. It's not my thing. To one of the food places. We've already checked at the very top all the different food places. Uh, and to the left is one of the entrances as well. Clinic for shoulders and stuff. Okay. Oh, so this is kind of where we're at now. Super drugs. Red Rider, Babology. I need to try Babology once. Oh, I'll see it. Order Babology. I'll see what it tastes like. Got mango teas. So these are kind of all the items of the menu. Excuse me, friend. I'm looking for not the teas, but the what are the options that you have? If you don't want to put a tea, we can mix it with the water. Okay. Uh, and we have like um, the special one is like a brown super milk, it's like a milk with a brown super milk. Or we have the biscuit. I'm, I'm wanting something mango flavor, I've seen the uh, cocoa de mango. Yeah, it's nice too. There's a little bit of tea in there. Okay, okay. okay. Like, is it going to be bitter tasting or is it nice and sweet? No, no, no. Thank you very much, miss. I'll take that then, please. Can I get uh, the mango one here, please? Can I get the normal one then, please? Yeah, can I get it uh, large, please? So one thing to note is boba doesn't like tapioca is so nice and soft. Uh, I, d I don't know what or who I'm speaking to to be honest, but I've I've never had these kind of stuff before. So I was I was trying the tapioca. I've, I've tried the bubble stuff before. The bubbles are very you know uh, they kind of burst in your mouth. Uh, tapioca is so nice and chewy though. It, uh, it's it's like eating mushroom. I don't want to say mushroom, but it's really soft and really chewy, candy like. So I really like the uh, tapioca. Uh, but I need to try some of the more flavorful uh, boba as well. Here we get the receipt, move on. So I'll just move on here. This is just uh, the kind of work area. Babology. Uh, Perfect. So this is just one of their, you know, advertisement of how they came and where they are and how they're trying to expand but hey you got like nice and chemistry and everything in here it's quite nice perfect i'll just wait you see kind of the insides of it there as well which one is coco di mingo yeah one two minutes thank you very much sir thank you We're just trying to skip this, there's not really much, but this is when you get the so coco the mango. Sure looks I'm really nice, like visually, I, I, I like the See, yellow and white color. Uh, I'd really enjoy that mm -hmm. visual of it. Some countries have got off the uh, Japanese place. Five guys, wing stop and American joints. It's quite nice. The menus and stuff. If anyone's interested. Cuts and stuff. So one thing to notice while I was doing this, I was kind of focused on the vlog uh, and I managed to not notice uh, toddler labor right there. It's I've the cutest the shit I've ever seen, man. Well, so cute. Bland, not very spicy. Wingstop is one of the nicer ones here. Look at him. Uh, today we're Look at the small toddler. 
Donald kebab. I so wish I had seen that. I would have recorded more of it. Yeah, it's quite nice as well. This is kind of the menu for the German Donald kebab one. We're gonna get the chicken, just kebab, OG kebab. So the, the they have something called the OG. So um, so that's what I'm gonna order now. I'm just gonna go through this very quickly. It's just proceed. So I'm paying a bit extra for the jalapenos. I don't like my stuff. Um, no, I, I like my stuff spicy. Nothing else. Just just to order. So that's eight pound fifty-eight, so basically nine quid for um, food, which is I, d I don't know what the economy is bad as it is. I don't know if that's expensive anymore, but like maybe a year or two ago, I'd have said that's way too expensive. You could have gotten like really nice food for like five pound, like a really nice burger. But hey, the times are bad, bro. Uh, I, d I don't know. Just skip this a little bit. So this right here is kind of the tour of the internal area. That's kind of the main menu. So I didn't sc uh, go to the left because people were sitting and eating there, but there's a massive area to the left uh, where people yeah, sit in like tables there. and everything. So that's kind of the shop area. And I just ordered now. Some kind of babology. So I'm trying the babology now. Cost four pound, I think. Which was quite a lot. This is so nice. It's so nice and chewy. The bubbles underneath. It does have a nice mangoey flavor. Super soft, um, bubbly things. Mm. Mm. Overall, it's well worth the money. That was four pounds something. Super I'm gonna be honest. I don't remember how much it cost, but let's assume five pound or six pound in case I've, I've under, uh, you know, reported it. So nice. So the orders arrived. It arrives in this kind of bag. This is the packaging for it. Very nice food packaging. Everything's really nice. Look really well. I'm doing it. Oh my god, you can just see the second you undo it. Just want to make a note. Unravels. Look at. I don't know if the word glistening is correct, but it's so shiny. It's like so moist. It looks like amazing. Super nice. Different layers. Got jalapenos, chicken, salad. I believe the smell is amazing. The smells out of this world. It's so delicious. Don't really know what else is in there. Really nice thick bread as well. It's I think butter dubs. You can see some of the buttering inside here. Uh, it's so juicy. It's so nice. I'm gonna put the camera down for a second. I'm gonna have a wee taste. I don't know what that white thing is, if, if that's some kind of cheese or cream. Um, some of the previous products I've had from them, uh, they all come in this, like, you know, I've only had this kind of uh, sandwich looking thing. They sometimes have uh, feta cheese in there alongside all the other different salads, and it's just amazing in general. And just thinking about the cost, I think um kind of McDonald's meal currently costs around five pound. So this is maybe worth two of the kind of the cheap McDonald's burgers. But I'm thinking this might be more bang for your buck, like it's got more fat, more um, you know, taste and more everything. I'm not sure, but yeah. This is amazing. So good. Mm. Super juicy. 
crispy on the outside. The bread is really nice. Super moist, everything inside. Really spicy, tingling sensation as well. This is beyond belief, one of the nicest things on the menu. Well, the only, the only thing I enjoy actually. The third trade signature dish. Super juicy, super nice, meaty. And just very well done. And I'm gonna just drink my bubble tea thing. Drink this. And I think that's the end of this kind of adventure. Super nice. It's like glistening is that nice. Super nice. One last thing I got to say is that the um, drinks on the, the Babology drink it was really delicious. The, whatever this German Donner Kebab sandwich is, is really delicious. But joined together, uh, it's not the greatest. I think a bad beverage should be like you know your traditional cola or my favorite Pepsi. But that's just one thing that I noted as I drank and ate together. But they're both super delicious either way. So that's everything done. I was just taking a note of the time. I ordered at, um, where is the time? At the very top, 3.39. And right now it's like 3.50. So it's like 10 minutes to, I don't know, get the food prepared. But, you know, it's very nice, easy to eat, one-handed eating. That was quite nice. I'm just throwing this stuff in the bin now. And now the plan is to kind of and eat and pretend to leave. I'll do a tour of the kind of outside Edinburgh area, with the parks and all the cool stuff on the way. That's the entrance, only the thing. Perfume shop. Skincare shop, body shop, a chocolate shop. I have always wanted to go to the chocolate shop, but I think it only sells maybe the like a raw product which might not taste nice. I need to give it a try once. Food shop, food shop. Very nice. Lovely area. Mm, tasteful. Everything's so nice. That right there, buildings, beautiful building. It's freshly brewed organic tea, handmade, 100% vegetarian, and all the other BS words. Really nice city, really nice area. I think um, I've already made a video of this, anyways. Uh. Oh uh, just I noticed something in my brain happening. Uh, that well, let's say it cost five pounds. That's like four bottles of like Pepsi or cola. That's so like really not a cheap expense. Delicious. But again, I think current uh, bottles of um, Coca-Cola, 500 ml plastic bottles, go for two pounds. So that might be you know rather than five, might be two or three bottles of cola. But it's still expensive. I'm just gonna skip through this because it's just me walking stuff. We've already been here to the left of the, you know, trains and everything. Um, in front of us, in the back, is a really nice uh, monument. The main train station. Getting to the right, that's a homeless guy. Poverty again is is uh, quite a big. Um, it was something on my personal agenda, so uh, whenever I notice it, I, I I have to. Well, I don't. It's something to point out at least. Like right there, uh, seems like a person that needs help. My man's having a bad day. I don't know if you've seen it in the camera. There's a guy in a bus stop that looks kind of homeless and not in the best situation. Moving on. It's kind of main beautiful park areas here. Yeah. Nice. 
the NASA literature on this building dedicated to literature. I thanks so much for listening. We should get for a friend. We'll get it. Really nice buildings. Oh my gosh. The Edinburgh Castle is to the left, like far, well, maybe like 15 minute walk left. So, I'm not going to sit in the back room there. That'll be there for you in a few minutes. That's another entrance there, this is one of the baggage to the Riverley train station. That one. So that's another entrance into Waverley and exit out of Waverley. Uh, remember Waverley is, is quite massive, it's got like un, you know three or two floors to it or something and tons of food places yeah, in there. The is massive inside, it's got like tons of food levels and stuff, lots of cool stuff in there. But we're here, touristy, I've got tons of touristy stuff to do. I normally don't come here, I'm normally busy doing a lot of stuff. But this is where Christmas market and stuff is. Oh, behind the chair. And even in front of us there's the massive National Museum of Scotland I think. It's quite massive. Close. Yeah, so that guy's the famous kind of poet, artist, I think it's literature. Yeah, in front of us you see the famous building which is the Museum of Scotland. You see it separated between two parts, one to the left and one to the right. And the left one is the only one to go to, so he's got massive because I'm going So one thing to note is I went through it pretty quickly, but what we have here is, so we went through, we exited the place, we're up here now. Uh, let me put this back. Uh, we are up here at the Scott Monument, and the Scott Monument is quite a big history for it. It's like one of the Scotland's greatest novelists. So there's tons of stuff, uh, and it's got, uh, I believe, 287 steps. It's uh, entry to it, I believe, is not free. I'm not sure where the steps are. I've looked up it a couple of times. I'm not sure where the entrance is, but I, you know, I've got a website here that uh, tells you. So is, these are some better pictures of it. Uh, at the very top, you've got like a marble uh, statue of the guy. Kind of, you know, nice paintings up there, uh, stained glass and so on. And if you go down here or up here, I think it's uh, eight pound uh, for adults to enter. It. I don't know where the entrance is or anything. I've never seen it. I don't know where the two hundred and eighty something steps are either. So hopefully that helps. But it's a quite famous guy, like, you know, from then, 1840, I think, was uh, when it was built on his anniversary. M very nice, very massive, and today's money is like nearly a million pound. And there are 64 statues on the monument that are for his characters from his work, basically. So it's, it's quite cool. It's kind of the front one facing to the main Princess Street. That confuses people, so I went in there once to the one, you know, right, right there it's the same National Museum, I'll get closer. There's a massive fountain in here as well to my left, but I don't know where. There's like a fountain that was a uh, thing from France, it was I'm of history in it or something like that. But quite cool, nice picnic area, beautiful area. Lots of historical fancy looking buildings. Whose history I have no clue of. Lots of people. So, yeah. It's kind of National Gallery. So, I think I'm in the back somewhere. It's too bright to see, but in the back up there, that's where the famous Edinburgh Castle is. But you wouldn't be able to see it. Ice cream. Museum. So, this is the National Museum of Scotland. Very nice, very beautiful. Don't go to the one facing towards the street. So, I uh, just want to pause here. Um, that right there, so we're here now, and that right there is called the Royal Scottish Academy Contemporary Arts and Gregorian Cal uh, Gallery. That one has some small pieces of, you know, artwork and stuff uh, which is free, but there are things you've got to pay for. The one here, which is the National Museum of Gallery, so we're here, we're coming through here. We're going to be taking a uh, right here soon. We're facing this way. This one uh, you can enter through here, and it's got all of the massive pictures. All of it's basically free. It's it's an amazing experience. I've been there. It's quite nice. So we're somewhere here right now. You get the free one. And it's got mm -hmm. the free levels. Super nice. It's a really nice museum. Yeah. Shall we show here? And the museum um, here in Macclesfield as well. If you ever want to come visit. Okay. Really nice architecture. Really nice. <laughs> I just like urban build. I like most stuff natural and urban. That's I'm gonna. Have. I don't know what the hell's going on, but musician or something. So this is the free one you wanna enter. Try and get some video in this direction. I'm an artist and a musician. 
fishing something. Very cool. Never seen this before. It's a model of the of the of the local area. Which is the street is where we've mainly been. It's quite cool. I've never seen a 3D model of the area. Oh, fuck no. So if you go that way, that's where the Edinburgh like logo is up in that hill up there. Typically in winter, that's where every all the tourists take all the pictures. Uh, and the castle should be to my right. I'll see if I can see it somewhere at the edge. Yeah. Hold on. If we can see really through the trees up there. Or ever, body of a lion, head of a person, kind of thing. Really beautiful architecture again. Really cool. And guy doing some music thing in the background. Oh, no, clearly, go for a wee run. See if I can make it without dying. Go. Museum from the front, quite cool. Windows, architecture, pillars, and the line body head. Kind of one of the entrances there. Oh my god, another tourist group. Around there, yeah. Oh, this is another really nice area to go to. It's about like everything. This is where you'll see the fountain. Out. That house is owned by some lives there. Quick, nice area. A lot of stairs though. <laughs> you know where all the pretty buildings and all the rich buildings are? I swear that's Edinburgh Castle right there. So if you see to the right of where I'm pointing. That building is Edinburgh Castle. Oh God. <coughs> and that's it for today. I'm going to try and find the next tram stop and get home. So like that right there is Edinburgh Castle. Everyone still likes. Actually before I go, uh, there's the word ass fountain here. And some word ass there. So I'll just show them too as well. And then... Um, yeah, elephant monkeys. <laughs> Statues and anything else that was working that night or something. Okay. Right down there. Hmm. I'm gonna get close because down there. Just look. I'll put there with the book. <laughs> People taking naps. I don't know if it's sunny, beautiful day. A better perspective of Edinburgh Castle. I think there were 45 or something sieges on it. The final siege ended with a... Uh, with a... Uh, the guy forgetting to get a large enough ladder to climb the walls. And it used to be like pretty small. Grew over the years. And over the hundreds of years of getting sieged. I'm going to finish my drink. I swear there was a photo somewhere here. There's new construction works that nice and forest you from some sort of angles, but there's new construction going on up there. So hopefully there'll be something cool. <laughs> Not sure what. Beautiful gardens though. Beautiful Princess Street. Shopping city. I don't know what the hell this is. It looks quite cool though. I'm in a blackish colour thing. Looks like, you know. Right next to the castle, rocks, stuff. I think the thunder might be down there. We'll go down and see what's going on. 
Oh god. Uh, hopefully it's down there. Yeah, just sit in, sleep, relax. Yeah, right there, the famous. It's got like some really cool ass history, I think it was. Something that. I've seen it at the end when I'm going up. It's a fountain that was from France. Or something. And there, it's a ship piece by piece. Yeah, but not. Famous sculpture. I think it's one of the only big ones that I've seen around. Food clean inventory is all frozen up. But, what a nice, beautiful area. Soft. Oh, I'm sweating like a, so much though. Uh, a famous rock Norwegian <sighs> mm. I think that I want to end this on Hopefully there's an ice cream shop somewhere here it's So warm So cool There's for that Awesome. Not nice the re rotation of it. Oh god. You shouldn't talk again, so <laughs> oh, that's a massive church up there as well. So we'll be going to that church when I think. Oh, in winter it looks completely different though. I don't know if this green and black going on here. Quite nice actually. So just to have some better uh, images of the uh, um, fountain, it's, it's the Ross Fountain. Here is kind of some of uh, better images of the people that uh, repaired it basically. It stopped working f I think from 2010 to 2018 and it needed a massive amount of refurbishment. Uh, so here's kind of the different parts of it where th they were trying to fix it up. I've got some facts that I'll say afterwards, but just look at some of the small parts. It's cast iron by the way, so it probably should be rusting a lot as well. Okay, so that's it. And to go back to it, so we, we went through here, we we're now here, we went down here. I wanted to show a bear here, but I skipped it by mistake. That's the Memorial Stone of Norwegian. So we're now here. And the fact about it is that it's made from 122 pieces. It's sculptured by uh, an artist called Jean. Uh, and he's got a long ass name, which I'm not going to pronounce or attempt to pronounce. But uh, it was produced in a world famous iron foundry in France. The fountain includes churbs. And I had to Google what they were because I didn't know what they are. But there, you know, if, if the Valentine's, uh, you know, winged babies that have, um, you know, the the bow, the uh, bow and arrow to get people to fall in love with each other, those are what chubs are. Uh, they have another definition. I'll go to sooner on. But it contains them, mermaids, walrus, uh, heads, uh, lion heads, and four female figures, uh, representing science, art, poetry, and industry. Cherubs are one of the unearthly beings who directly attend to God according to Abrahamic religions. You gotta just google this to get what I mean. Um, so it's a magnificent piece of 19th century art. It was some local uh, gun maker called Daniel Ross. He saw the fountain in London at the Great Ex Exhibition of 1862 and he gifted it to Edinburgh. However, Deems Ramsey, who's the minister of the St. John's Church, uh, thought it was grossly indecent disgusting, insulting and offensive to the moral feeling of the community and disgraceful to the city. So it took quite a long, so it stopped working uh, from 2010 to 2018 and it took uh, nearly two million pounds to fix and so the guy that thought this was disgusting and everything, uh, what was his name? Dean Ramsey, his church is up here so the next uh, clip is me just going up here somehow and going up to the church here. He's also got a memorial to him. Okay, he's have a memorial, so we're going to his church here. Uh, I think we come out here somehow. Not sure. You just got to watch and see. Because I don't remember what I did. Yeah, 
Yeah. 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 There's a massive church to the left. It's almost quite cool when you see it. This close. Oh god. It's quite a trap down here, I mean, it's like... Oh, exactly, I mean, I am or I'm not. Got a number of stairs. Oh god. Okay, we're back up to Princess Street. Buses and everything. Looking buses are the one you want. You want to see it? Now we're in the massive... Church. So the part of St. John's. Massive church. And that's the tram. Massive one. I don't know if you're allowed in or not, but... The outside at least you can see in... Quite a massive church. If you have the Ukrainian flag due to... The current... Situation. But... Massive. To the right of it you've got the John Walker, which is... I believe a... Bear Company, and that one, they have all the cool stuff in winter again, they've got like a counting down to Christmas card, does the split on the full building up there that you see, this is a massive church, 